come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on this uh, quest to take over the world one movie at a time. 500 of them, are, I think it's so, so far, right? Five Closing at six. Yeah, yeah, we're pr- approaching Jesus. 570. Yeah. You've seen a bunch of movies. You've watched them with us. Thank you very much for <laughs> going along. Like, you've seen a bunch of movies. <laughs> <laughs> Good ones, bad ones. Hopefully you have Great ones. <laughs> Uh, these are the internet root movie, uh, <laughs> internet radio superstars. Sean, Holly, Michaela, <laughs> and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by uh, Colin, who is as concussed it sounds like as the one woman in the pool. In this movie. <laughs> yep. Uh, Colin, what were you we also stabbed in the head? Yeah. <laughs> is that a yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the whites okay. of my eyes rolled back in my. Yeah, and black eyes roll over white. Okay, okay uh, Colin, <laughs> what do we watch tonight? Uh, we watched The Prowler. The Prowler from the year. 1981, mm. the heyday of the slasher film. Indeed, right in there. Uh, directed by? Uh, Joseph Zito. What else do we know Joseph Zito from? Um, well, we've watched, uh, well, how many Joe Zito movies have we watched? We haven't oh, watched. You tell us, have you done The Original Maniac? <laughs> No, we haven't done. Well, he didn't. He didn't. He, the character's name okay. is is Joe Zito, okay. I think, or Frank Zito in that Frank movie, Zito. right? Yeah. Uh, Joe Zito started off with a movie. I think that was a fictionalized version of the Patty Hearst story. It was called Abduction. I've never heard of it. I oh, my dad talks about this. Movie. Really? Yeah, Get my, the fu- my, fun fact about my dad, guys. He's got a weird <laughs> weird obsession with Patty Hearst. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like my dad, it. that's loves to talk about her. That's situation. a fact. <laughs> that like, I don't know if it's fun. We didn't know this. <laughs> he just has like random does he have theories. He, yeah, he does, and he's just like he'll always. This is where I get my anxiety from, right? He'll be, be talking about her, and he'll be like. Can you just imagine what she been went through and what it was like and what the toll it took on her? Like this is why I'm, I have the diseases I have. <laughs> like, but Dad, yeah, like, okay? yeah, like he's like fascinated with like the psychological aspects of Patty Hearst. That's yeah, cool. that's I've seen them all. Well, yeah. you'll have to find out. Yeah, if my seen dad's seen the, that for sure. I <laughs> the know. Joe Zito movie. Um, he followed that up with The Prowler, and then that got him the job with uh, Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then that got him the attention of Canon Films, and then he made, uh, I don't remember which one came first. Oh, uh, Missing in Action with Chuck Norris, and then okay. Invasion USA. There you go. There, there we is, go. Which we saw. And uh, Dolph Lundgren's Red Scorpion. And the, the one that, that so got away it from him. Dolph Lundgren's Red Scorpion? That's no, it right. should be. <laughs> yeah, Red Scorpion with Dolph Lundgren. But the one that got away from him, mm. the one that could have changed the course of his future. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if we talked about this on the Invasion USA episode, because we did that movie. Um, he was the director in contention to do canon film Spider-Man. Like he worked oh. on Spider-Man for like a year, I think. Really? Yeah. There's a trailer, a teaser trailer that Canon Films put out that you can find on YouTube for Canon Spider-Man. It credits Joe Zito. Interesting. Do you think there is a parallel universe where the MCU yes. is Canon? It's it's the canon Marvel Cinematic Universe because they there's a parallel universe where in the 90s they bought up all the rights when yeah. they were cheap and made all the movies and then they took off and canon has as much money as like Disney and Marvel has now. <laughs> I want to go to that universe. Well, this is the one. There's a reason canon's canon and they're no yeah. longer in business. Was um I'm trying to remember. Well, it was New World Pictures did the Fantastic Four and that was the one that was never released, right? Like oh, somehow no, that, seen that, that trailer. Yeah, yeah, it's out there because it used to float around comic conventions. I'm sure it's on the internet somewhere. But yeah. canon did the Punisher and Captain America mm-hmm. under like oh. 21st century. Captain America. I think, mm-hmm. right? Um, did they do Doctor Mordred? Uh, no, that was Full Moon. Full Moon. It was okay. just like the Doctor Strange, but right. yeah. Uh, so Joe Zito, I looked him up. Uh, not not uh, doing much uh, since like two thousand. And I don't alive? even know if he. Yeah, he's, no, like, he's, looked, he's still alive. Okay. He's yeah, I was like, old. he should be doing conventions. Yeah, meet this dude. Um, some poster sign. Yeah, I mean, why not? But yeah. he doesn't seem to be doing anything mm-hmm. or hasn't for a while, and he can't be living on the successes of Friday the Thirteenth, right. uh, the final chapter. You never know. The invasion USA. You never know. Missing in action. Yeah. I mean, I know those are big movies, but but Canon famously didn't have money, so yeah. Like, I mean, how he's, are you getting residuals now. 
he's like a he's a slasher movie director that actually seemed to move through like the Hollywood ranks, kind of got mm-hmm. to canon and then stalled out or whatever. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a big part of his success is because the I, well, Tom Savini we talked about. I think uh, what was it, the burning we did a bunch yes. of yes. on Tom Savini. So go back and listen to that um, episode, but. Um, he had done Dawn of the Dead. That got him the attention of uh, Bill Lustig. So Maniac. Oh, I William think, Lustig. Yeah, yeah, I think that came out before. Well, that, yeah, that was 1980. And then The Prowler. And then, you know, I mean, he was just doing because he did The Burning. I mean, he did mm-hmm. all these like great uh, makeup. Effect. I mean, he's the guy, right? He, right. He's yeah. the man. Is there like mm-hmm. a Tom Savini film festival where it's like a drive in all night and it's just like a highlight reel for his career yeah. of all of his best movies? Just the best where he should be doing yeah. 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 God, yeah. That'd be awesome. I think we talked about him on our Two Evil Eyes episode mm-hmm. also. Yes. But yeah. So you can go back and listen to those. And I think it'll get That was that Harvey Keitel movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. The George Romero. Yes. And, um, I Dario Argento. There was double cat murder. Feature. Oh, yeah, yep. cat murder. Where, there was uh, cat where, murder. Um, Harvey Keitel. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying, still trying to think if he actually killed a cat. Yeah. Because we were yeah. convinced that this man got drunk and killed oh, a cat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Remember that scene? Yeah, yeah. 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 That man method is, acting. Method acting. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I think I just black out on this show because I don't remember anything we watched. Yeah, this, was, really like, this was like those two Poe <laughs> stories, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in, the, the, in the house. In the house, yeah. In the house in the corner. You guys really love the house. Yep. More house yeah. talk came from that episode. The, in the first one, she like hypno- yeah, Adrian Barbeau hypnotized her <laughs> husband, and he died while he was still in a trance. Yeah, I like that we're summarizing past episodes we did. Our yeah, own yeah, show. Our own for show. our member who yes. was there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so, I got nothing. We got to, <laughs> We only got so much brain space. You got to overwrite those files, you know. Right? Yeah, we can't remember everything we watched. Uh, looks like I was Joe really Zito. busy last year. <laughs> Joe Zito also did a movie called Blood Rage. Not that blood. Not the blood rage. rage. No, but it's one word. Blood rage. under a different name. Yeah, but still. like you have to specify on this show. Yeah. <laughs> blood rage. Blood, <laughs> blood rage. Blood rage holds up a very nightmare special at place Shadow Woods <laughs> or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. the great Thanksgiving mm-hmm. slasher mm-hmm. before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So the Prowler. Um, I mean, what's the best like slasher movies of this? era right i mean this is there was like one every week mm-hmm. i think it's like a hundred mm-hmm. you know or at least two dozen <laughs> i know it's a big gap but. i mean i need to see a list be like all right that's a good one that one's bad that's a good one that was bad i don't necessarily think this one is on that list oh well see because i i see on the back of the uh, blu-ray box that we mm-hmm. have here yeah, what's one of a- the slasher genres finest moments by horror digital Mm-hmm. I, I think the original <laughs> My Bloody Valentine is one of the best slashers ever made. Which, and the one? original My Bloody Valentine? Yeah. 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 And it doesn't get enough one. credit. It's overlooked it's all fantastic. the time. No, yeah. because the version that we did on this show, we watched it when they put all the gore, gore back, back in, in and, and it changes so the movie. Yeah, because yeah, you yes. really need... Yeah. I mean, yeah. is that why people go to see slasher movies yeah. is for the gore? Mm-hmm. That's, it's that's the reason part, people that's part go and see them and the reason people don't go and see them. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. The, but they're and it sure. makes it memorable though. You remember the gore scenes and the weird stuff that you haven't seen before. You yes. know, yeah. I so. think that I'll never is, forget a scene in this movie. Yeah, I yeah. think that is why people. Well, I mean, is the Prowler remembered for the because deaths? yeah, of I'm gonna the, say yeah, and because if you're a Tom Savini, you know, effects completionist, you will watch this. It also has the fact that Zito did Friday the Thirteenth, so right. you go mm-hmm. back and like, oh, those two guys did a movie before that, mm-hmm. right? So you see it. It has a good silhouette for its villain. That it gets a lot of mileage out of that silhouette. Yeah, you know, does. like I, I had never seen this before, but even I had seen all the poster artwork, so I knew like the pitchfork and the helmet kind of get up. Like, yeah, I knew that that was the look. There's some know? pretty memorable imagery in this yeah, movie. Yeah, sure. Several. Why parts. the pitchfork? I wonder. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't kind of match up. No, yeah, it should be like a bayonet or something, I right? Bayonet, I get the gun, yeah. I get you know the long. The yeah, I was gonna ask if there was any explanation that I just didn't. I did not catch it. Okay, that's because yeah. uh, Tom Savini is just like I just want to poke people with a yeah. Well, with what uh, for the folks at home who, who haven't seen it? Uh, what does the Prowler look like? Your I, your horror villain. He, He's a military man. He truly is. <laughs> uh, he has a. Like the pith style helmet, yeah, and helmet. like a full balaclava covering mm-hmm. the whole face, right? Dark yeah. green material, like fatigues, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No camo, just dark green and everything. He's yeah. got he like, laces up earlier like, in the movie, like D Day yeah. fatigues, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
it um it always when well, you said my bloody valentine because he looks like harry warden yeah I mean, in the silhouette yeah, he does yeah. or he's, you, know, you know he's black mm-hmm. backlit you know yeah he looks like harry warden um the miner but i don't know what he's called the 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 killer the, the prowler he's the, the prowler, prowler. Sorry. prowler. Yeah. okay that was obvious one. I, I was like that's right, right there, there. No. Yeah. okay so the prowler um let's see who else is in this movie well we could talk about that but I think yeah. we're probably gonna hold have to hold off for that for a little while <laughs> uh, the main get for the movie okay so um, what is the prowler about we right. begin in nineteen. 19- 44. Which like already, was, I'm like, whoa, okay, it was a, here. It was we, a confusing opening. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't really understand what was going on. We got some, get back to the news he realized. Yeah, we got like, some footage uh, of the Queen Mary. Soldiers are coming yeah. home from war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So soldiers are returning home from war. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I can get out of this opening that it tries to set up is there's a line of dialogue in it about, you know, uh, some of the soldiers are coming back. Did their girlfriends wait for them? Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, there's like uh, now suffering the trauma, of psychological wounds of war. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to get over, you know, the mm-hmm. fact that maybe they've. They're going to have to get back to the lives they put aside when they went to war. Yep. <laughs> Read just like that. Yep. Just like that. Just like that. That's how they all sounded. And so then we cut this from is the that news. to a letter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A dear John point, letter being yeah. written in real time. Yeah, not a love letter. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm young and I have to live my life. I must love, <laughs> not you, someone. Okay, but like in her defense, back in that day, you could write a letter like that and never see that person again. Yeah. You know That's what I'm saying? Like true. you could totally get lost and like it must have been so easy to just like move to a new town and just start over back yeah. in those days. You know, mm-hmm. you could literally tell your people your identity is whatever the fuck and they have yeah. no way of proving it. Like. They did. Wow, what a time, yeah. <laughs> Send them off and uh, you'd go to visit your aunt too and come back with uh, your little cousin Roger yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> little cousin Roger. And no one would know. Um, so, so, yeah, this is signed by uh, a woman named Rosemary, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This gets really convoluted in the course of this movie. Complex. It's, yeah, I would say complex. Uh, okay, convoluted. Oh, no, no, com- you're right. Convoluted. I was just adding on to that. Um, yeah, especially I, uh, there's a character in this who just disappears. It's, uh, it's, yeah, uh, wh- wh- where'd he go? I don't know. Uh, All right, we're gonna figure that out. Okay. We're gonna figure it out, Sean. We're gonna figure it. We're gonna, we're gonna brain work the Saturday Night Freak Show. No, and we're, we're gonna figure out. out where he went. So, um, okay, so it's 1945. It takes mm-hmm. place in Avalon, California. I think it was right. Sure. Although apparently it was filmed in Avalon Bay or something like that. Cape Bay, uh, New Jersey, but it oh, takes in place in, in California because the the main house I think is the uh, the Cape Bay Inn or the Inn of Cape Bay or something okay. like that. Um, it's decorated with a bunch of. This is a nice photograph, you know, of like uh, it's got Christmas lights streamed all mm-hmm. over it for this graduation party that's taking place. Mm-hmm. So, like. Are these high schoolers, college kids graduating after it's, the war? It's unclear. There's some yeah. soldiers there at the party, I think right? It's a school graduation. Now that okay. I've seen the entire movie, uh, it's just they had graduation dances yeah. back in the day. Which well, I mean, don't I, necessarily have now. It would it would suggest that it's a college mm-hmm. because there's dorms, yes. right? Yeah. So unless it's like a prep school, but it doesn't seem like a prep school. It no. seems like. A pretty standard college dorm. Yeah. So I would say college graduation, whether it was that, I mean, later on we fast forward to eighties and I think it's college graduation in the forties. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. I think it was because I think that was, I think the idea is that the soldiers have come back, their girlfriends are graduating from college and they're meeting up at the, at the, the dance, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which what is emceed just- by like the greatest, uh, 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 CC Carpenter. <laughs> like I don't know about greatest, but the most enthusiastic. Yeah, very enthusiastic. MC. Like even when he's not talking, he's pointing at people. Yeah. He's like, eh, eh? He is. No. I see. You get leave some room for Jesus. Did you guys <laughs> ever have a school dance that had a live band? No, 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 same. No. We always no. just had a DJ. DJ. Yeah. This yeah. is a this is a lie the movies told me that like yeah. I would have a high school dance well, live band. Yeah, but this Let's is the eighties. Yeah, this yeah. is the eighties. Yeah. My my parents. <laughs> yeah, my parents said that they always. I mean, Cheap Trick played their dances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 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 I just I feel like that's even a trope still in movies though. Yeah, like, that they still do that. There's a band for the high school dance. Sure. And it never is. Yeah. Yep. Well, people don't actually play instruments anymore. So how could they be? But, um. 
<laughs> this is a very boomer take of you, Colin. Yep. These kids, no one's playing instruments anymore. Kids don't play instruments. Anymore. Play instruments. All it's all buttons and noise. Ah. <laughs> play with their computers. And it Where's makes that cloud? I gotta yell at something. Yep. <laughs> um, so the set. So this is the inciting incident. The pre-title, mm-hmm. right? Uh-huh. We meet a girl at the. Oh, and so we 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 learn that this movie uh, takes place in Chatham, Chatham, Chatham County. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is inferred. We got this off of the police badges, right? Yeah. That takes place, but this is important. I think they uh, they say it too. Yeah, oh, they do. Yeah. Okay, so do they say that her because she has like a three part name that's revealed later because this is right. a key moment that's happening. Yeah, why couldn't like you wrote this? You can make up anything. <laughs> why are we complicating her name? Just call her fucking Rose. Yeah, because they're like right. Pam. Uh, oh, actually, that was it. They were calling her no, but her name is Francis, Francis, right? Francis. Fran- yes. I don't fucking know. Okay. <laughs> So what was her last name? Francis? Wait, <laughs> she was Francis. It turns Rosemary out, yeah, something. Chatham, sure. Chatham, Chatham, Chatham. Okay, so she's Francis Rosemary Chatham. The Dear John letter is signed by Rosemary, and so even though they're calling her Francis at this thing at the beginning to throw us off, uh-huh. right? Uh, Why are they throwing us off? I don't know because it's a mystery. We don't need to be thrown is off. It? I mailed it five <laughs> minutes in. <Yeah. laughs> Like they a, don't do a very good job of making this a mystery. <laughs> Have fun, Sheriff. I will. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Sh- what, Sean okay, but like, did call but it before, like five minutes into the Before movie. we even get to like the sheriff part, why are they trying to sh- throw us off from the beginning? <laughs> mm-hmm. out, of, out of something that should be clear. It, it that doesn't, we need yeah. to be clear for the we story We need to be clear on this. We don't need to be thrown off of this why part. Why are we being confused No, this here. is yeah. like the weirdest. This, like, this should really be like, this is Rose. This is when Rose dies. And Rose dying is important. Like, yeah. that should be very clear. But that's not. It's when not. When you're watching no. the movie, it just seems like there's a girl who goes off to the little uh, uh, pergola, whatever, at the end of the... Gazebo? Gazebo at the end of the... Uh, pergola, is pergola a word? <laughs> I want someone yeah, to look this up. Yeah, it is. Okay. At the end of the pier with this guy to make out and uh, so tutor in fatigues. So uh, her, her beau, who is in the army. Yes. And uh-huh. so now she's with just hanging out with this guy. Yep. Okay. But her bow from the army, this is, I mean, again, inferred, has come back and dresses up in his fatigues and slaughters them both with a pitchfork. But they know he's back, right? I don't know if she knew. Because he makes comments about, like, her, like, her um, soldiers coming back. Oh, well then. Which is again why I'm like, why are we making this Does so? Because I'm, uh, I was so confused. I thought, he, I thought when they were like making out, he said something about like if her soldier comes back. Oh, I didn't hear that. Maybe, then, I, I maybe don't, I, don't I don't know. know. Maybe. Yeah. And it's just very confusing, and it doesn't need to be. So I it's a like, very. I like that the prowler though threatens them first by cutting the lights to the gazebo. Yeah. Like that's like the first instance of like something's wrong here. Gonna turn out your twinkle lights on the gazebo. Like it's just. He's got to sneak it's out not there under the cover of darkness. Of course, yeah. it's brightly lit, so right. we're sitting there going, but I they're supposed to be like, we're in the, the pitch moon. I think he wanted to kill the mood. Yeah. I was, I was, I was just going to yeah. say, he wants to kill the mood. Yeah. He's like, don't you have a fucking romantic time? Right. Exactly. Don't you dare. Mm-hmm. Don't you dare. The pitchfork to the back that goes through them both, and blood yeah. and copious uh, pours out of them. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. we cut to 19. Well, and then he places a rose oh, right. on their dead bodies. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then we black, too. Because this is a clue. Mm-hmm. To uh, the mystery, mm-hmm. no. That we're to the mystery. To no, it's not a uh, mystery not, for us. It, it, yeah. No, we know, they, because we saw it open in her yeah. name. She draws like a little rose she on does. the Y of her name yeah. as part of her signature. Yeah, but we didn't know this was Rosemary at this but point. But why? W- but why Rose shouldn't Rose. we know that? But we're connecting Should. the dots. Why yeah. shouldn't we know that? Like right, we yeah. open with Rosemary's letter, and then this girl dies. Why are we not supposed to know that that's Rosemary? Right. We're. S- <laughs> it's, it's like you're trying bizarre. to keep it from us real hard. Yeah, yeah, because this is revealed to us like late in the at the beginning, maybe of the third act. Yeah, or, where we get to watch people think. Yeah, <laughs> and go lot. like this is. I'm going to sort through all these like family photos of people, and oh my god, did we ever see? She wrote an article on this. Yes. Yeah. Did we ever see no. a glimpse? Of, we should have. No. We, ju- we just we? we just see her carrying a stack of them. Okay, but who? She talks who? We've, we've, oh, sorry. Okay. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. We're, all right. We're in 1980 now. Uh, yeah. Pam. <laughs> Damn it, Pam. Is that her name? Uh, that's her name. Pam McDonald. Okay. <laughs> Everyone gets fur- full first and last names in those credits. <laughs> yeah, because that's important. It, yeah. I mean, they. <laughs> what this movie thinks is important, real weird. So Pam, th- Pam is ostensibly going to be the final girl of this movie. Yes. Uh-huh. Then, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And she has written an article, apparently, about the 1944 killing of Francis 
Rosemary Chatham. Chatham for the college newspaper. Right. Yeah, okay, which let's yeah, let's highlight this. She wrote an article for the college newspaper. That's a you think that sounds like not very important to this character? Oh my God, she cannot stop saying, well, didn't you read my article? Didn't you read my article? You wrote for a college newspaper. No, no one read it. No, like, probably no yeah, one read it. Yeah. Yeah. it. They care about it so little, the movie didn't even show it to yeah, us. Exactly. Yeah. That's how much it does not yeah. matter. So let me ask you. You would you... think she won the Nobel Prize for this fucking article, the way she acts about it. But but did you get this? That Because again, another plot point that I don't think that the movie hit on very hard uh, is that this is the first graduation party that they've held. Since 1945, Since I had no they idea. Right. That's they, what that's what they, they said. I'm just now that's learning this. Ask. Yeah, that's yeah. what they said. Okay. Yeah, but they say that it's given by the owner of the the, the the tackle shop or something like that. Doesn't he say something? He's got like in the corner store guy. Yeah, it's uh, inferred in the dialogue. He's with the putting sheriff. on the party. No, no, no. What did they say? They were. This is the first one. Okay. This then. is yeah. They say this is the first one. Okay. okay. The sheriff so, says okay. it. All right. Yeah. Well, the sheriff says it because okay. So we're introduced <laughs> to the sheriff and his deputy. Deputy is Mark. Deputy chiseled face. Mark London. Yep. Does not look like a real person. No. no. And the it's, sheriff. It's distracting. Is, it's really face. distracting. Yeah, you were saying he looks like. Uh, he he looks, looks like one of the marionettes from Team America. Yeah, like, like almost extreme, exactly. Mm -hmm. Sculpted cheekbones just, that look un like fake. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's just, and just, uh, just a. Just He's a very solid waxy chin. looking. Him. Yeah. yeah. I looked this guy up. His name's Christopher Gas uh, Gowton, I think, Gowton, and. Yes. Uh, he wasn't an actor for very long, but he became a producer and he became a producer of like As the World Turns or <laughs> Days of Our Lives and stuff like that. So he's he a daytime getting, soap producer. Uh, you think he kept getting turned down because they're like, your head's too big. I'm sorry, <laughs> we need someone for this role with a small Oh my head. God. Yeah. He he produced 1,665 episodes. Yeah. As the yeah. World he's turns. like the super Holy producer shit. of soap opera. Okay. He must be. He's probably pretty rich then, right? He like, looks like he could be in a soap opera. Yeah. yeah that's why I'm does. like, did mm -hmm. he? How, how I'm come sure, he I'll wasn't be, in? I'll bet he was in one of them. I don't think it showed up on his uh cast list on the imdb I'm that he looking. was actually in he only has 10 acting credits yeah, yeah. and then he's like oh, wow he, yeah. a little bit of directing and then producing all these soaps yeah. so Smart. the deputy right has a relationship with pam and so these are our main characters of the movie mm -hmm. and the deputy is being put in charge by the sheriff who's going on a fishing trip mm -hmm. and the sheriff is farley granger mm -hmm. and so if you know who farley granger is this is a uh, like he's the big get for the movie because he was in Alfred Hitchcock's Rope and he was in Strangers on a Train. Right. He's the guy. Right. Um, so he's like the big name, I guess, for the Prowler, right? right? I was say, I know the name, but I'm attaching it. Yeah, to Hollywood's name. Golden Age, you yeah. know, and all that. Um, Have you seen Rope? Yeah. I just watched that for the first time recently. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's good. It's the, That's good. The, yeah. the single take. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's yeah. Here. Uh -huh. It's good. I mean, it isn't. They couldn't do right, that right, with right. the technology, but he he does it in a way that mm -hmm. I think it was like the first time that it ever been really been yeah. attempted. Um, to to watch. Mm -hmm. So, so Farley Granger, the big get, is leaving the movie. Going yeah, on, he's going on a fishing trip. This is also weird. Now mm, we introduce a character, and then he leaves. Now, as <laughs> so suspicious. This time, I'm I'm watching his dialogue. Right, I'm like, what is he saying? And he says something about like. Well, they're putting on uh, that uh, graduation party again. Some people don't like that kind of thing. <laughs> every I'm going on every I'm going line on. of dialogue from this man <laughs> is like, guess what? Yep, it's me. <laughs> like every line. Well, he, he also sets it. up before he goes on vacation. He's like, you know what I heard over in Columbus? There was a guy who stabbed a girl at a convenience store. And he might be heading this way. Good luck, Mark. Uh, you can reach me at the cabin, but don't. Yeah. Cut, yeah. <laughs> Cut to John Ralphio and Mona Lisa. Don't be suspicious. Yeah. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> so uh, I think there is a stop off at the bait shop to meet uh, the guy who owns that. And the Otto Kingsley's Otto, his assistant. Yeah. It seems like a kind of a slow-witted guy who yes, delivers stuff. Does. And why this Makes is important. Makes for a very confusing scene later. Yep. Yeah. Very, okay. very confusing. <laughs> so there's also the introduction. So then basically you've got uh, the co-eds right at the college are going to have a party, the graduation party that mm -hmm. night. Uh, there's an amusing scene where we see them all getting dressed. And that is intercut with 
the killer like getting dressed mm. for <laughs> his night out. Uh huh. I mean, there's like this is it. We're just going right into it. Yeah. You know, it's like um, some of the girls uh, notice that there is an old guy across the way mm-hmm. who has been watching them all semester. Is, yeah. They call him Major Chatham. Is that Major Chatham? Major so Chatham. we're like, okay, Major Chatham. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chatham County. Mm-hmm. Eventually, so Rosemary Played Chatham. Played by Lawrence Tierney? Yeah. 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 Is there a close-up on Lawrence no. Tierney? Do we know who Lawrence Tierney is? I mean... Dillinger. I know. I know. Well, <laughs> Reservoir <laughs> yeah, Dogs, yeah. 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 Uh, that's the only thing I know, I'm sure... I, and, and this is probably uh, insulting He's to him. He's been in but, a lot of things, but, yeah, yeah, Lawrence yeah. Tierney. Like, yeah. And she's just like, wait, what? Yeah. He's a reputation for yeah. getting into bar fights and being, he was stabbed in 1970. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> Tough guy actor. Yep. Yeah, you remember him. He was Joe in uh, Reservoir Dogs. Motherfucker. Looks just like... Hey. <laughs> uh, but he's in it, in a wheelchair, wheelchair bound, on a second floor, yep. lit in a window, always watching. Yep. And... And then in one scene later on... Yeah, where he really has to tell that girl something, because apparently he's mute. Apparently, where he somehow makes it down like two flights of stairs in a wheelchair and gets out into the garden to stop her. She's running away from the prowler and grabs her by her dress. And then we spend a lot of time later on, like investigating his house. A lot of time, yeah. Because Real time, like, a lot of time, he a might be the prowler. Time. But the man is in yeah. a wheelchair. <laughs> He's yeah. the prowler. Okay. He's yeah. Probably yeah. seventy, eighty. Yeah. At this point, uh, if. If Watcher taught us anything, look at the guy who's taking care of the guy in the wheelchair, mm-hmm. right? There you true. Go. Like, true. That. Okay. <laughs> who is Rosemary to Her, him? That's his daughter. That's his daughter. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So he... That also did not come okay, across. Okay, so there's... You a, didn't figure that out when she kept no, looking I, at all the pictures? I, I, I got it, but I'm just like... It, it, <sighs> there is a scene where Pam... So Pam and... Uh, Pam is obsessed <laughs> she's obs- with the mystery she's obsessed with this mystery yeah. and it just doesn't matter right now it would have really helped to see her article or like so, to see the front page of something that says uh, something about the murder is written by pam whoever just so we know that she has like that this is an interest of hers that she obviously did some research to, for this story and everything yeah there's literally a prowler and they're like looking for him and she's like but look at this picture it's his daughter and he's like well, what does that matter so yeah, yeah he's like uh, okay and Meanwhile, we're sitting in the audience going, and? Yeah, because yeah. the impression, the way that they play that scene, right? So they have gone over to, so there's been a couple murders. We'll double back on those. But they have gone over to um, the major's house because mm-hmm. the major grabbed her, right? As she's running away from the prowler, yeah. major grabs her. She tells cop Mark, like, and the major grabbed me. And he's like, what was he doing downstairs? And so we got to go check on him. So they go into his house and they prowl which, around in his house. Which again, this the logic in this movie is just not existent because he literally lives next door to the dorm because yeah. they see him through the dormitory windows, yeah. right? She she runs outside of the dorm and he's in his yard. But for some reason, they get in the jeep to drive to his house. In the yard. They got to go around the, in the his grass. backyard. They got to drive around. Got to drive around the front of the house. Because the Jeep is parked in the street. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. If, yep. if cop yeah. work would just take you right over there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, Any I normal understand person. why everyone yeah. keeps telling him to call the sheriff. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Get it now. Yeah. yeah. This is the character arc. that bas- Is there an arc there? I don't even no. know. It's just a thing There's that no they arc. set up. There's always everybody's questioning Mark because no, he, he looks he like get the bad guy. is he like a one year graduate out of college or something like that? He's been a, he's been there for two years. He's been a deputy for two years, so he's okay. probably a little older than everybody else, but probably came from that. Yeah. Okay, so they're all friends with Wait, him. Do you it's know like, that, or are you just making that up? No, they said he's been there. The sheriff said you've been here for two years now. Does I think I can leave okay. you alone. Right. You always gotta watch out for that one older guy that's hanging out with a group of people younger than him. You know what I'm talking about? You guys ever know someone like this? Someone that's just like a little too old to be hanging out with their friend group? Like in trick-or-treat, or um, not trick-or-treat, Thanksgiving? 
Yeah, the yeah, one guy yes, just, like, exactly. The party? Yeah, yes. there's one yes. guy who is like, like, I got drugs and guns. He was also the guy that was like a super senior, you know, yeah, usually. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, yeah, like you know, he's like 21, hanging out with a bunch of like 17 year olds. You're like, mm, we yeah, get the extreme is, yeah. version of this with the old guy who's just like, yeah, I we love do. having the women around. Makes yes. me feel younger. That is the extreme version. Of that, but yeah, just like, be, oh Jesus, this guy's okay. I'm yeah. like, ah, but a little creepy. If Sean hadn't already called it, here's an already a reason to be suspected. This guy, right? Yeah. You're a little bit older and hanging out with uh, all these kids yeah yeah i thought about you that know? i'm just like yeah he's too old mm-hmm. and he's too yeah. who are we talking about the the, the um, i don't know who the, what this guy's oh you're is. not talking about the sheriff no the, the old the, guy the, yeah. the other old yeah. Yeah. oh the he's like the chef yeah he's yeah. like yeah. the guy who, yeah i've been here for since the dawn of time right. and I, so you're like years. okay so he remembers and could be in the age group yeah. right because this is the mm-hmm. thing that we have to remember there's murders happening but it's got to be an old person it has to be an old person or does it because i mean I don't. Th- it could be the serial killer from Columbus, like who's made his way down and he's just killing people. Yeah. It's very. But the we movie had the inciting not- incident, so we know it has to tie back yeah. to the '40s in some way, yeah. which means it has to be an right. older person. But even yeah. his motivation is just. Continue. Okay. <laughs> so they're in this house. They investigate every damn room of this house. Every single and, one, and we see mm-hmm. every single one. And the scene that is the treated like. Time. So Pam goes into the drawing room, right? A lot of mahogany mm-hmm. and oak, mm-hmm. and rich uh, mahogany, and yes. the mm-hmm. lamps and the yeah. And on the mantelpiece, beautiful woodwork. She yes. sees Lovely. a photo of a woman holding a rose, and she looks at it like, "Wait a second, <laughs> now." Like she's really cracked something. Yeah, here. yeah. Because she wrote this article, which you assume that she had researched, but it is kind of played like eh, in college. You kind of pull shit out of your ass. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like wait, I think I've seen that picture before. Her name was well, she it's was been it's like, years. Yeah. Francis Chat Chatham. It's like and she really... we're in Major Chatham's house. Could it be in that Chatham? God, yeah. <laughs> Could it be that Francis? Was his daughter? Dun dun dun. See, even you saying it now, I hate you. <laughs> yeah. Like just, but that's how the scene plays. I know, right? I know. You see that yeah. going through her head. If she was a journalism major, I this movie makes me so angry. <laughs> yeah, so, so angry. She doesn't do she's basic research. She's so bad yeah. at it. Yeah, but this does kind of set up a motive for Major Chatham. Does it? The eighty-year-old man in the wheelchair. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right, he's well. No, it doesn't actually. He's not no, getting revenge for his doesn't. daughter's death. The by killing innocent. Yeah, okay. that, that makes that no back. sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, he's absent from the house, mm-hmm. um, but they the are, movie. they are determined to see him. So they come back to his house later and research or research the exact same rooms. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And if you've seen this movie, you know why this is exasperating because we were just here and we spent like an hour yeah investigating yep. this and really I would be inve- long investigating time. quote unquote uh the the deputy's Poking investigating around. skills are not great yeah, yeah. like how it's he like, looks in every room except for the one that has the light on yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm looking for someone let's check not gonna look in rooms. that room <laughs> no sir not that um, one well spoilers the major never does appear again in the movie we don't even know what well, happened. Because he's yeah. still in the yard. Is that yeah. what happened? Did he get killed <laughs> by the prowler? Just wheeling his ass back. We don't know. He's probably stuck in a divot or something. Yeah. Right. A branch got in his wheel. I on. just... Uh, <laughs> 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 you can hear the exasperation. Uh, we haven't even talked about the first, like, two murders. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because so, we also need to get to the killer because I don't understand the killer's motive. Okay, well, let's back okay, it up. Now, and, that's what I was... That's what okay, I, I was like, that's, that's, that's what we need to... That's what we need to get to because I don't understand like you want to go I, I, there I, I now, or you want to you want to you want to no, backtrack? Let's, let's let's dive into some of the murders. Okay, why not? <laughs> because this is like, I mean, it's like, okay, there's a dance happening. There's a killer on the prowl. We don't know mm-hmm. who he is or what he is, what mm-hmm. any motive is or anything. He's just out, and he's going to kill people. We know that because we've seen maybe uh, Halloween or Friday the Thirteenth before this, right? Right. That. Uh, the just you'd say he's in the room, and we yeah. know that this is going to culminate in yeah. a we slashing. St- we started with a murder, and we know there's something or someone on the loose, and there's a girl in a shower. We know something's about to go down. Right, and there's always the threat of yeah, the guy who, who cut up the kid and stole his car. Yeah, the the red herring. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So there's a girl in the shower because this is eighty slasher movie, mm-hmm. and uh, her boyfriend fake scare, right? Mm-hmm. You get mm-hmm. the you know, the camera prowling up on the the shower room door, mm-hmm. and then ah, it's just me, and you know she's How like, "How fast can you take your clothes off?" 
All right, stop on. Yep. So he wanders out into the other room to uh, begin disrobing when all of a sudden he's killed by the prowler. Now, this effect, I have to tell you, <laughs> like, I mean, it was shocking the first time that I saw it. I can imagine. I think it's because it's just so fucking brutal. I mean, it's, it's brutal. Oh, it, it's yeah. brutal, and then it like goes into overdrive yes. when his eyes go white. Yeah, this so what, well, describe what happens. This one happened. makes me a little queasy. Yeah, this one, yeah. Yeah, this one's a... Uh, uh, he gets grabbed from behind over the mouth, and then, because the killer has a longer bayonet-type blade, just sh- stabs him right through the top of his head, out through the bottom of his chin. Mm-hmm. And then... Right, and so he's blue. And he, but he's still alive through all of this. Yep. This is what makes the Savini effect so much more gross. Is that like usually the people live and suffer for a little bit first, mm-hmm. whereas like other, I feel like other effects artists, it's like they're instantly dead. Which yeah, whatever. Yeah. Where they but cut this, away, oh, you know, movies yeah. they cut away. But yeah. this, it just seems like it goes on for fucking ever. All of them did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the guy is like moving underneath the prosthetics, and yeah. it's making me feel <laughs> sick. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so I mean, he's bleeding profusely, but then but like he's said, moaning he's, and like he's feeling yeah. every minute of it, yeah. of it, and it feels like he gets to a certain yeah, point. Where like, it, and then his eyes roll back. I really in his thought head. they were going to show him like vomit blood. Yeah, I, mean, I, I really, think he would have. Yeah. I think he was just the hand was over his mouth. But the like, amount just, of blood gushing out uh, of him is like yeah. a lot. But I this time I didn't really catch it. But in my mind's eye, when I replay this, in my you know, it was like he got stabbed, and the the knife comes out through his throat. And I thought the killer tried to pull the knife out, and that's when his eyes roll back. In my mind, that's how I see it. It, I don't think it actually does play like that. He just all of a sudden opens his eyes, and they're white. And it's just like, holy fuck. Like, his eyes have rolled back in his head from the the brain injury. The effect's so good, I can't see how it's happening. You know what I'm saying? It looks so, like, the way the, the knife is moving under the skin when the guy's, like, pulling away a little bit is, oof, that shit is what makes me Queasy, yeah, that's why we have yeah. ten minutes of behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to show you how it's yes. done. Yeah, and he like he loves a slow stab, Savini. Like, mm-hmm. as, that's why we got the pitchfork. Lots oh, of yeah. slow push ins. Yeah, to work it in there. Yeah, yeah. this is this before the ratings board. I mean, it was movies like this. Obviously, like if you go through like the nineteen eighty eighty one vintage, that's when you get like the extreme gore. Yeah, you can mm-hmm. show this to people in like example number one. My case is closed. <laughs> yeah, this is a bit much. <laughs> Not saying I would. I'm just yeah. saying. And they're like, they're okay, we're getting rid of all. Uh, no more of that. And they they started the MPAA started a war on these movies that mm-hmm. continued for like twenty years. Um, is it excessive? No. Because well, I mean, like it's excessive, but it, I mean it is, it's excessive. It's but. excessive, but there's like what only four or five deaths in this. Movie? I know it's like <laughs> it's not that many. It's like it's hard to answer that question because is it excessive? Yes. Do but we, it's infrequent. Do we want it to be and need it to be? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because it's the star of the movie. It's yeah. excessive, yes. but it's infrequent. I yeah. Would yeah. It's like you're going to see when a magic happens, show. It impact. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. It has yeah. more impact. Yeah. But that's um, a death that uh, you need to remember for later. Yeah. 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 Right. Which makes yeah. me angry. Yeah. <laughs> well, then the girl in the shower. So we get two murders like very close together yeah. as far as uh, timing goes. So then the killer goes into the shower and he has a pitchfork. And it's it's not like he just shoves it through her. No, he like s- takes his time impaling her with that pitchfork. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there was oh, no, again he used, Sabini he used the boot on the first the first couple. There's uh-huh. that shot of him like leaning on it with his his boot, which mm-hmm. kind of adds uh, that like yeah. Jesus. Yeah, this one he's like very slowly like pushing it into her. Yeah. And and this one like there's nowhere to hide with it because she's fully naked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it has to look really convincing, and it does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It does because I'm like, what did he do there? I'm yeah. like, he had, there's an overhead shot, I guess, where uh, you know you're, oh, yeah. you're looking down on her. So like her rib cage is kind of blocking the actual. I don't want to say penetration, but penetration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's, it's there's, shot in such a way yeah. that they, they can pull it off. Yeah. So he's got like blood tubes or something in the actual mm-hmm. fake uh, pitchfork, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. like just running. I mean, it's like all over the place. You're like, holy crap. There's something yeah. about the way the skin like bends before it breaks with Savini effects always makes me feel yeah. a little icky. It's Ugh. very effective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a yeah hyper hyper gore. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's like within like twenty minutes. So they get you set up, and you're like, oh man, if this movie's gonna be like this, mm-hmm. then you're gonna you're gonna wait a while because there's this <laughs> investigation. <laughs> <laughs> to have at least yeah. two houses to investigate. Yeah. yeah. Um. 
there is a it's not even a subplot there's this girl who uh is um challenging pam for mark's uh, attention yes and mm-hmm. so like mark comes to the dance and this girl takes him off to the dance floor and then he dances with her and pam's like just kind of standing there i right by the punch bowl mm-hmm. and then this girl later on um goes out for a swim yeah a swim. i think uh after her boyfriend is up chucking right right yeah he's also that's his character thing he yeah. pukes for he a spikes long time the punch and, and then gets sick yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so she goes out for a swim and uh, hops in the pool and the prowler is around. Which I, which I automatically like this, this scene. It's like if you're if you're all dolled up to go to a dance, like you're not diving into a pool like that. Right. You're not doing that. You might take a little dip. Like a little without getting your face wet, without getting your hair wet. But she's Sit like on full the edge, on, put your feet in. Exactly. Yeah. But she full on like dives in multiple times. Yeah. Well, I think this does not happen. This is also, I don't know. Yeah, because it, I was trying to see if I could excuse that through a plot point, but I can't. But right before this, right, because uh, Pam has gone over to the house and is in the room where the, the in, if she just looked in the shower, mm-hmm. if she looked on the bed, she'd see blood stains. But she sees the prowler. And that's when she's chased out of the house, right. and then that's she where, got punch on her dress. Yeah. She's changing her dress, and whatnot. Yeah, and that's where the major grabs her, and she starts investigating with Mark. Mm-hmm. And they tell, I think the 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 dean of the school, she's a chaperone of some sort. That I don't know. there's a prowler, the and so mm-hmm. they're like, everybody everybody needs to stay inside. But this girl has left before the message mm-hmm. takes place. Okay, so yeah. she's like, the party's over for me. I'm going to go out and go for a swim. Mm-hmm. And uh, was she, uh, oh yeah, she was coming out of the pool and she gets he, kicked in the face and knocks she her does. into the, and then she's like, uh, you know, she's got like brain damage for a minute. Uh, <laughs> she <laughs> must because uh, not yeah. more than a minute. This is several she's minutes. She's having a like, full on seizure. She in the pool. swims she's swimming like in... Elaine from Seinfeld dances. Yes, exactly. That's a great <laughs> That's the best comparison I can think Jerky movement. But it's like she's being attacked by the fucking It Follows monster. And <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. But there's nothing in the pool. No, like, I think yes. that was her trying to say, like, oh, I've been I'm I've been kicked. I'm seeing stars, you know. Right? That's, that's But it goes on for so of long. That's the thing. It. Like it's <laughs> and she just keeps swimming in circles, panicking when she could just get out of the fucking pool. There's right. nothing stopping her. Like Yeah, because even when she comes to, she's yeah. still just like yeah, not ma- taking any action. Mm-hmm. It's very weird. Eventually, she does swim to the edge of the pool. Mm-hmm. But guess what? The prowler's in the pool and rockets out behind her and like Which to the surface. Makes no sense, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I do, this logistically does not work, but sure, who cares? Yeah. Why get in the pool? Why be soaking wet? For well, and how did she not see you? Yeah. So how does he kill her? What's the, how's this effect work? Mm, he slits her throat underwater. Yeah. yeah. It's Which pretty cool. is well, pretty cool. Yeah. Well, he does it above one and then she ends up below water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like because this is where I you think see the bubbles thing, of air and blood. It's pretty. Awesome. It's pretty cool. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that was what I think sold it. Tom Savini's like so the murders seem to have like they have the impact where you're like ew, and then they keep going, and then there's like yeah. a second. There's wave. layers. Yeah. There yeah. are layers to yeah. his kills. Yeah, yeah. there's an uh, aftershock. Yeah. Gets, yeah, yeah. Because this one, I think. There's like a, you know, he cuts her throat and then there's like massive amounts of blood like Mm -hmm. pouring out of the wound. Mm -hmm. But then there's a shot of like him sawing the blade back and forth. And and you, it looks like the blade is underneath her skin. I mean, it It looks looks so real. Ghastly real. Yeah. (laughs) And then, yeah, she falls below the surface and all the blood is, you know, mixing with the water. Yeah, you actually do see. Uh, that's why I was yeah. like, "This is going on for a long time." I'm like, "Oh, it's because they wanted to catch the blood seeping out of this wound right, yeah, yeah. and the air bubbles." It's like yeah. that's pretty gross. <laughs> 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 Those are like the major kills, right? I think like oh, there's one one final one, but the the the, the uh, big one, the dean or whatever she is, the chaperone comes yeah. out, misses the fact that there's all this blood in the pool, sure. and. uh you know, she's doing that, what horror movies do. And this is about that point in the movie when they start, you know, Sarah, start Sarah, Paul, yeah. Paul, you Virginia? know, yeah. Hello. And uh, what happens? What happens to her? I mean, she finally sees the, the blood in the pool. Mm-hmm. Um, she tries to run out. She tries to run out. And yeah. the killer grabs her and stabs her in the neck. 
Yep, she gets one in the neck. Like what do you stab her with? I can't even remember. The long blade again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The bayonet it, blade. It's kind of like the effect that I think he used on uh, that Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon. Was no. it? I thought about the Kevin. Kevin Bacon went the other way. It came out. Yeah, wasn't? Didn't he use an effect like that in uh, maybe like on Annie or something in uh, uh, Friday the Thirteenth? Or somebody got like the right in the oh, like the remember. below the Adam's apple, Oof, like, you know, in just yeah. in the soft spot right Oof, there. A <laughs> I like it. Yeah, uh, and then he's like twisting it around, like yeah, he's yeah. like, no, more movement, more movement, <laughs> <Yeah>. more passion, <laughs> more passion. Yeah, I mean that man has seen some shit because he was a photographer in Vietnam, was he not? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah he, I'm starting to think he just killed people. He's seen he's horrors like, we cannot comprehend. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. He he said that. He yeah. said. He, I remember him uh, in an interview. He was saying, you know, how taking pictures of it. He was a photographer, mm -hmm. and taking pictures of it gave him that kind of distance. But the right. stuff that he saw, you know, and then he became like fascinated with it. I guess and would study like corpses mm -hmm. and death mm -hmm. and all that, recreate them. And he uh, famously said, I think of one. Uh, thing that I saw, he's like, every movie that I see where somebody plays dead, they always get it wrong because the jaw always goes slack. It, mouth should Ooh. always be open. Ooh. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that's like the tamest thing he could say about what he saw, probably. Oh, like, fucking yeah, right? hell. Yeah. Um, so, uh, back to the investigation. So, <laughs> what has Pam and Mark investigators determined in the Chatham house? Oh, wait. There is, okay, there's a clue that all of a sudden, is it a clue? I don't know. Comes out of nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. They try to get a hold of the, the oh, sheriff, right? Because right? now it's time to call in the professionals. No, yes. Yeah. And then we get a very long. Very long uh, scene, scene of the desk clerk at the hotel. Yeah. Just yeah. being mm -hmm. irritated about doing his job yeah. and going to wake the guy up so he never even checks to see if he's there. And yeah. So we don't know if the sheriff is actually there or not. Um, this, is the, this is where we wait. We watch but, people wait. Yes. For what seems like an eternity. Seems like a very long time. Um, but the clue is that uh, the tackle store owner. Mm -hmm. Kingsley. Kingsley comes mm -hmm. in and, uh, you know, like, I saw those kids from that graduation that, you know, I hate. I hate the kids in the graduation. And they've been messing around in the graveyard. And we're like. Is was this a thing? Yeah, I don't remember I, kids messing around in the graveyard. Well, they go to the graveyard and have sex. Yeah, but well, that wasn't ever mentioned. Yeah, it's never been a part of. That the, was they never were all part of the plot ever. At the well, okay, so they have to go investigate the graveyard, and what do they find? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, elaborate, please. Yeah, a grave has been dug up and opened. Basically, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Mark, uh, <laughs> as he's climbing down in there, really strangely edited, cuts away from that because yeah. Yeah. Otto, you remember Otto? Oh, yeah, Otto. Yeah, the simple guy. The simple man. Yeah. Appears at the door of the Jeep that Pam's waiting in, like she's freaked out, so yeah. Mark has to run back and there. The, like the, the way they cut back and forth in this, it's so, they take their time, and mm. they're, yeah. they're trying to build suspense in a way that doesn't do, build anything. Yeah. It's like they, they're... Pam is sitting there and Otto's like creeping up on her and then he's trying to like turn over the casket like they're cutting back and forth between the two and yeah. there's zero tension built by this. Yeah, because Otto apparently disappears by the time Mark gets back there. Then it's like, I found an open grave. Now we have to go back to where we were yeah. and pretty much do the same thing. Yeah. And we, we, this movie repeats itself yeah. a yeah. lot. In who's in the ways. grave? It's the girl from the swimming pool. Lisa, but whose grave is it? Yeah. <sighs> It's, Another fucking mystery we got to try. Well, out. the grave yeah. just has a rose on it. Yeah. So, so astute viewers like us at the Saturday Night Freak Show are sitting there going like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, it's Rose's grave." I mean, now, have to be. why did the killer? So obviously, the killer is doing something motivated by the 1945 yeah. death. But yeah. I, I don't understand what the killer's motive is at all. I think he's just... He's off. just he's just mad because they're having this dance again? Like, that's it? I think that's it, because and that's why they went into, at the very beginning of the movie, all the stuff about PTSD. And, mm -hmm. you know, soldiers come back changed and what the shit they gotta deal with. So I think the, the fact that they're having the graduation dance again sets them off. So just he's, like my bloody Valentine. Yep, yep. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, at this point, we know it's the, it's the fucking sheriff. It's the sheriff. Yeah, we know it's the sheriff. <laughs> yeah. So you're telling me that he's been sheriff of this goddamn town for 30 years, yep. and he's been perfectly fine, yep. but the second 
they have a dance. Is this Footloose? Like the second they have a dance, he's just so mad <laughs> and so like footloose. triggered by this that he just murders the children. Then he snaps. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yep. it's because that's what we're going with. Yeah, that's- he has a psychotic break, okay. right? Because like that's the time when he killed his girlfriend, right? Mm-hmm. And so by having it again, he's like, oh my god, I'm back there again, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is his PTSD. This is a brave move making a movie. Or uh, one of the greatest generations is a psycho serial killer. Uh, well, when you ha- when you have seen the horrors of war and don't get yeah. any treatment for that, I mean, yeah. you know. But the movie doesn't argue for any of that or anything. It's just no. like, nope he uh, he came back yeah. from war. I'm, His yeah. girlfriend no, killed him. I am not he killed her. Right, and I am not arguing the extremeness of PTSD. Yeah. I'm arguing that he's a sheriff. Yep. And a dance is what triggers him. Yes. Yeah. That's where I draw the line. Because it's the, I think that's it. He's he's going to imagine somehow that he's back there. And so then I think Pam becomes the surrogate Rose because there's actually dialogue to support this. At some point, he seems to lock her in a room instead of killing her. He tries to, the killer, we see giving her a Rose. He yeah. calls her Rose. Is he confused? Does he's he like, think I'm she here. is Does Rose? Does he say, like, I'm here for our date or something? Yeah. I'm here for our date, Rose. Yeah. You know? So he thinks that Pam is Rose. But did he think the other girls were also Rose? And right. That's the thing. Chuck Why is he killing the other the- girls? Because he only killed Rose. Why is he killing the other girls? I would have thought, because uh, I was just thinking back on it, if it was couples that he was killing, he might that might make more sense. He killed. The, he killed the chaperone. It should be more of like a lovers lane situation, right? Yeah, Where probably. he's like, you know. And we have, wait, we have that whole other couple that we see that nothing ever happens to them, right? Right. right. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. Like, what's the point <laughs> of that? It's yeah. Spider. Justin Long, you mean? Yeah, Justin yeah. Long like, and the girl with the hair. Yeah, nothing happens yeah. to them, right? Yeah, yeah, they just get peeped on by some creepy old dude. Yeah. But it's set up in a way that you kind of remember it as a stock scene, because it looks like the opening scene of Friday the 13th yeah. with the two people in the, the um, what were they in the barn or the attic or whatever, and the camera the Boathouse, up, maybe? The boathouse. It looks, it's shot just like that. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you know, somebody, I heard something. Somebody's. The wind. We see basement. that it's the creepy, well, you're saying he's the creepy, the creeper. Yeah, the, oh, yeah. Uh, not the prowler. This yeah. is the creeper. The other guy. The other old like, guy. You know, who's, 70 years old or whatever. He's trying to beat the, beat the tar out of um, the, the drunk kid who ends up in a jail cell. Yeah. Yeah. So he's peeping on them. We, we cut to, I thought that was odd that we cut it to was. and show him. Before I think we see the point of view shot, maybe I have this in my mind wrong, but it's like you just deflated the tension that I think Mm -hmm. that this is the prowler coming to kill them by showing that it's not. Right. Right. Yeah. It's just this dude. And then next shot, he's gone. And they're never dealt with again. Yeah. Right. None of that is ever pointless. Absolutely pointless. Um. Back at the house. Right, back at the house. There's we a, have, always end up. We've returned yeah, to She's back Chatham at looking at those goddamn pictures. Because she's trying to together. crack the case that has, doesn't need to be cracked because we already know. <laughs> and now she, there's a necklace hanging from the chimney. <laughs> and she <laughs> well, thinks, when you say it like great. that, Holly. And she thinks, I should pull on this. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm no, gonna, no, I'm gonna no, fish no, this out. Pull, well, what's this? What's this I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna there, fish this yeah. out. Yeah. I haven't cleaned this chimney in a while. I'm gonna fish this I'm sorry, out. Sorry, but if I see a necklace hanging down from a chimney, my I'm only thought is it. going to be it's around someone's neck. No, I'm, right? not, <laughs> I'm not grabbing it. Yeah. <laughs> Why else would a necklace yeah. just be hanging in a chimney? Like, yeah. come yeah. on. So well, she is pull- it hanging around yeah. someone's neck? It yes. is because she pulls and fucking a whole rosemary's body comes crashing down yeah. okay because now, he had to dig it out of the grave and stash it somewhere who did i guess the prowler he pulled he he pulled her out of the grave okay put the the other girl's body in the grave so right. then he had to stash rosemary somewhere and like oh, i'll just shove her up the chimney because he loves her so much <laughs> yeah, yeah. <You> know? <laughs> i love her so nice much i'm shoving her up the chimney yeah so did yeah. he yeah. shove her up the chimney he dropped her down the chimney in the in the ma- in her dad's house <laughs> i like <laughs> colin is there a more dignified answer <laughs> i don't know which i want it to be i don't i like I, the idea of it going down better i don't know if <laughs> i like it stuck? down the chimney or shoved up the chimney because both would be really difficult I, is he up there but going why is like he on the roof Wait, 
because he's going to shock the dad by dropping her body all of a sudden down the chimney yeah. and dad's going to be sitting there in the wheelchair and freak out. <laughs> but it didn't happen. She got stuck <laughs> like, before she came out. So okay, yeah. sure. Okay, so dad is watching this all happen from the yard because he hasn't gone yes. inside yet. And he's just like oh my bringing God. Rosemary home over his shoulder. Yeah. And he's like, what do I do with this fucking yes. thing? And he's like, he's like sees there. dad. He's like, you know what, dad? You know what I'm going to do? Go into the roof. <laughs> Go into the roof with her. Yeah. She's going to yeet her down that chimney. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> For safekeeping. I, yeah. It is kind Holy of bad. Holy shit. Okay. It makes, that might have turned me around in this movie now. Uh, with our, how did I just talk you into it? I think you might Did I talk you into it? That was not my intent. wasn't a part of the movie turn you around in this movie? <laughs> I made that back. up. You think <laughs> hour we spent the logistics of that investigating this house. Funny. You can't recommend yeah. a movie based on what I made up. <laughs> right? You can't. We can't do that. You can't do it. <laughs> so the uh, Mark gets um, the Prowler shows up right in that room that Mark should have checked out the first time that yep. he was in yeah. it. Turns out Prowler's been hanging out there. There was a scene oh, yeah. where the okay. power went off right. even so though the power, the power goes was out. in the second floor. I don't get it. The power goes out. The Prowler, cause the lo- the Prowler loves shutting the power off, mm. right? He's done that multiple times. It's his mm. favorite thing. So now he... What did he do to Mark? Because Mark just, just like passes out. He does he does he punch him? Does he chloroform him? Like uh, what does he do? Because clear. they make no noise. Did There's he not, no noise did he made. Not show what he did? Oh nope. no, I it didn't show. Him or something. It didn't. And show all of a sudden, we see Mark hit the ground and then being dragged out, yes. and then the prowler then locked in a closet. But it's very no, no, quiet. No, Lo- no. Uh, he locks Pam in the room. Yeah. He takes the pitchfork to Mark, and it looks like he's about to kill him. And we cut away. Yeah. And. Apparently he didn't pitchfork Mark. It's well, like because, what the- no, it's because he's like, oh, I'm gonna kill him. He's like, wait, nope, I gotta do it together. I gotta stab him together. <laughs> so he's got to go get the girl so we can stack them, so we can kebab the both of them. And that's when he does the I'm here for our it. date, Rose. Yeah. But Rose gets away from him and plays hide and go seek. I love for- that Holly got real into this. Yeah. Oh yeah. So then there's a there's a hiding that sequence <laughs> that takes uh, 16 minutes probably of screen time as she hides under a bed waiting for the guy to demolish okay, but her he's, room. He's doing the thing I've always wanted to do where you have a room full of stuff covered yeah. in sheets, just like the in the others, you know, you mm-hmm. got like statues and shelves and stuff of various heights covered in just white sheets. Violently going and through yeah, the room. you go through and yeah. you just hit it all with like a weapon of your choice to make sure no one's under the sheets. Don't you guys all want to do, do that? I do want to do yeah. this. Uh, yeah. yeah. I gonna, really that's do. what I'm Smash Rooms are for. Toby, you just wait till Christmas. He's going to open a room and be like, it's all yours, honey. It's, it's like the cinematic oh, version of a rage room. a Smash you know? Room yeah. for Christmas. Yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> but I need there to be like a, a ballistic gel doll under one of them. So I do get the feeling of like I actually hit a target, you know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Where is yeah. the person hiding? Yeah, I gotta yeah. find the person. That yeah. got really yeah. dark. It goes off when you hit it. And <laughs> yeah. I, just, I don't really want a balloon, but I kind of want a balloon. It's like what they do on Mythbusters. No, yeah. Holly oh, is yeah. horrified. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to smash things. <laughs> I mean, I do but, too, but I want it to be like a cinematic way, you know? Uh, right. So, like, honestly, rage rooms are kind of just throwing garbage at the wall. I want a more yeah. cinematic experience, you know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Pitchfork getting on the. Yeah. Sick gelatin. I found yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got him. Yeah. Does like um, if you when you get it, is there like a siren that goes yeah, off? Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like jackpot. Yeah. I think they call this Pol- hostile. Balloons <laughs> drop from the ceiling. Yeah, it's All great. Right. Yeah. So I mean, now that makes it fun. Yeah, that's well, festive. She. Now I'm gonna uh, tell Toby to watch out. That's a- <laughs> I can't remember if all the doors were locked in this sequence. No, that was before no, she, she was trying out. to. Yeah, so she gets the out. Doors are a real problem in this movie. Real My problem. God, yeah. every single one is locked in a way that she cannot open. She can't figure out. You got to pull that door instead of pushing the on it. The amount of doors. In this yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There They're are all locked. so many doors. Every um, room has like three doors. <laughs> and now, so she's cornered. The prowler is coming. We're like, oh shit! Mm-hmm. Her number is definitely yeah, up. This and is then it. All of this a sudden. There's a shotgun blast and the prowler goes down. Well, and on, who? Hold on, we're not there yet. We, we've failed to mention the rat. Oh, oh yeah. who, who right. makes an appearance was... for some reason while she's hiding? It's like because right, she's gonna make a noise and he's gonna know that but she's the thing there. Is, she doesn't react as if she's gonna make a noise. Mm. No, not like, at all. Like and you the... would think that the purpose of the rat would be like her going, <gasps> like she's about to scream, but she like right. She doesn't even cover her herself. mouth or anything. No, she's no. just like eh, she just stares at. And her. The no, there was no comes in and then the rat just goes away. There was a scene too where she was like hiding behind a sheet and it didn't really, it didn't get really the you know like she's petrified with yeah. fear. No, she yeah. moves hiding out. spots various times and nothing ever comes. Yeah, so they end up going into um different room 
The, the geography is all off. It's I couldn't a, follow it. It's the biggest house of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it truly is. But uh, as she's about to be killed by the prowler, mm-hmm. the prowler is shot. Yeah, can't skip over this scene, Colin. Mm-hmm. That's what I was talking about. There's yeah. a shotgun yeah. blast. Okay. And the prowler I goes you were talking yeah. about the other shotgun. No. Blast. I was like, holy shit! No. And then no, there's a shock about. reveal because who shot the prowler? Otto, is that his name? Yeah, it's Otto. Simple, I remember the, Otto, the, the simple man. Yeah, yep. And then Otto. the most confusing. 35 seconds I have seen in a it's, while. It's longer than that. There's there's the whole score change. It's like oh, a love like it's, theme. Yes. It's, it is. They it goes stare at theme. each other longingly. Mm-hmm. She starts to smile yeah, it's, like, it's very, oh, like, Otto. It's you. And he's like, it's me. <laughs> yeah. It really is. And we're like, what the fuck? Because he's like, he's giving a little smile. He's mm-hmm. like, oh. I'm really not a bad guy yeah. after all. Remember earlier when you were really creeped out because I was following you around? Well, but it's like they're falling Now here I am. It's, it's <laughs> crazy. It's the weirdest goddamn moment. Yeah. It's crazy. Agreed. It is kind of nuts. But thankfully it's cut thankfully short. Thankfully it's cut short. Because the prowler's dies. not dead. Yeah, but he shotguns Otto and Otto goes down in a big uh, blood yeah. splatter against yeah. the wall. Yeah. And then... The uh, prowler begins to tussle with uh, Pam, and this is usually the scene where you know she pulls the mask off, and it's like it's you, but But he can't breathe. Yeah, so he's he's been shot. Yeah, he's been shot, and then she stabbed him with the pitchfork in the back. Yep. So he can't breathe because you know shot and pitchforked. So he's struggling to get his mask off mask off because he can't breathe. Yep. Which Mm -hmm. I mean that makes sense. And this is where it's like, oh my god, it's the sheriff, and she's like, it's the sheriff or sheriff, it's you. And it's like big Scooby Doo. We know who it is. Yeah. 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 We got it. So he shows up. He's the killer, and she yeah, that struggles. Whole, that whole scene with the desk clerk—that was his actual desk clerk at his hotel. Probably, yeah. <laughs> right? They, yeah. they didn't tell him they were going to film that. That was real. <laughs> um, so uh, she shotguns him in the face, <laughs> which is actually <laughs> was not expecting this. It, uh, I mean, it, it reminded me of the shotgun blast to the face in Maniac. You know, yeah. it is very it's, similar. Face Always explodes. love to see it. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. fantastic. See, I thought they do it before, so this way we'd never know who it was. And it'd be like, yeah, it'd be yeah. a mystery forever. Yeah, yeah, there was a danger. Piece them back together. Yeah, which they would eventually. But no, his head—it's like a scanner's explosion. It is. It's very like, scanner. It's and fantastic. then they fade like right out, and you're like, it must really have looked quick. too fake. I'm yeah, guessing. and they yeah, cut so they're out like, of it. We gotta quick. get out of this real quick. But it's effective. Shocking. Jesus Christ! It's effective. I'm glad they faded out because it works. Yeah. And I'm like, we should just run credits. But they don't. They don't. No. Uh, Mark, yeah. still alive, apparently, uh, didn't get uh, yeah. a, a pitch work. Right. And uh, he's like, well, we got to clean this up. He's with the other cops. State police show State police up. Show up yeah. Yeah. And, I got to talk to this guy. You go inside. Yeah, because she's got to clean up. She's got this other guy's blood like all over she's her. She's right. covered in ugh <laughs> at this point. And I think that's the thing. She's just kind of walking around in a daze and mm-hmm. you're like, you're what you really want to do is get that shit off you like as yeah. fast as you can. So she goes up to the bathroom. Well, where- she goes upstairs and you hear the water running. And you're yep. like, wait a the second. hot water is still going. It's still running? Yep. And who's in the shower? The two from earlier. The yeah, I don't man. know their names. I don't no. forget their names. Yeah, because but the one that was stabbed in the head. He's hung him yeah. up on mm-hmm. the shower by his tie. By yeah. his tie, yeah. yeah. The one that was stabbed in the head and the one that was pitchforked in the stomach. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know what's happening here because nope. I've heard no interpretations of this that it's like a hallucination or something, but I don't think it is. He Why? reaches out. The guy who's been stabbed through the head and his eyes yeah. have gone and white. He's currently hung. Reaches out and, and like, grabs, grabs her. her like a fucking zombie. She backs away and then she screams and screams and screams. Mark runs up and then we show that guy. Now he's dead. Yeah. Was it a hallucination or did he actually reach out and grab her either, and then he died? Either way, I don't like it and it doesn't matter. <laughs> then we fade out and the movie's up. Yeah. There's yeah. no point to it. <laughs> there's no fucking point really, to it. Really weird. Well, really weird. 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 The way that it was shot in the music they were playing, I'm like, they're playing up the Carrie moment. Yeah, they're oh, yeah, doing yeah. the Friday the 13th Definitely. ending, which was ripping off the Carrie thing. Mm-hmm. But it was like, this is their Carrie moment, yeah. the shock ending. Oh, the yeah. dead I mean, guy is, is still. Are they alive. trying to say that now this is her PTSD? And now Even, she's going to be triggered? Oh, probably probably two. two. Electric Boogaloo. Uh, this movie was retitled uh, Rosemary's uh, Killer in some other markets where they deleted all of the. Um, Gore, and and apparently, I think this is maybe in Britain because this was, of course, a video nasty. But I think uh, the I think they also removed the killer's identity in that version, 
So if you see it, it's titled. You see a print of it somewhere titled "Rosemary's Killer." It's missing. Don't watch that. <laughs> don't watch yeah, that. Don't one. watch that one. <clears throat> you want to see the Prowler? All mm-hmm. right. Um, okay. Now we'll go around the table and let you know individually what we thought of it and whether we'd recommend it to you. But first, we're going to read some of your mail, and in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He prowls. I mean, he looks like a prowler. He creeps. <laughs> the creeper. Yeah. He slither. He creeps. Slinks. Yeah, the creeper. <laughs> Um, we should let the good folks at home know how they can get a hold of us by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Freak Show. Or X, formerly Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram or threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, wants us to know mm. that we are inducting a cast member from the Prowler Onto the Wall of Fame, wow. and it is Tom Bray, who uh, you will, of course, recall as the guy who is being spied on with his girlfriend Justin Long. by Justin the Long. peeper. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yep, he was also in Deep Star Six, which we did not too long ago, and he was also in Prince of Darkness, and he was also hmm. in Riptide. Oh, nice! Wow. Okay. okay. Well, thank uh, you for doing the Lord's work. Yes. And there you and uh, about tonight's uh, movie, so the mailbag is kind of thin this week. I think it was because Thanksgiving. Because it was a yeah. holiday weekend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael Whitaker writes in about the Prowler and says, so wait, Joseph Zito did pre-production work on a Spider-Man movie four years after making this movie that also shares a name with an obscure Marvel Comics character. Oh, Coincidence? Yeah. Yes, it is. Still, it would be interesting <laughs> to see when an 80s superhero movie directed by a slasher director produced by Canon Films, that seems like a recipe for disaster. Mm-hmm. I know, in an amazing way, though. Like a disaster mm-hmm. I want to see. Yeah. yeah. Joseph Zito doing a kid's <laughs> superhero movie. Uh, Novato Judoku says, uh, this movie was shot not far from where I'm from. That's in New Jersey. Nice. And uh, wild to see lesser mainstream horror pop up with local town names. That's awesome. Yeah. But then uh, I thought they it was called something else. Avalon, California. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Uh, Aaron Don <laughs> Gilmer. Gone at this point. Aaron writes in and says, I love that you're doing this. Exclamation mark. Four of them. Oh, nice. Prowler, she's a fan. Travis Legler says this is the movie that had Joseph Zito work with Tom Savini for the first time and made Frank Mancuso Jr. want to hire Zito to direct Friday the 13th, the final chapter. And I'm very interested in hearing your thoughts. A um, couple weeks ago, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, we watched. Uh, mm-hmm. Michael Whitaker writes in again and says, uh, I'm a few weeks late to this, but Dr. Sin... Yeah. is implied to be a past member of the comic book superhero group, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. His likeness is on a painting in their headquarters. I'm sorry, what? The- what? Wow, this well, Dr. Picture. Sin touches everything. Yeah, yeah. I know. Like, Dr. Wow. Sin. Who's Dr. Sin? And it's the, the It's the... The night creatures, do- night, uh, yeah, Captain it's, it's the, okay, n- okay. yeah, Doctor Sin, the Night of the Scarecrow. It had a very similar title to the right, one we right, watched, right. and so, but that was the one my dad was telling me about. This, like, he's like, it's wholesome, and then you look up the Scarecrow, and you're like, that's fucking terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it was like <laughs> a pirate, pirate thing, yeah, scaring yeah. people right. off yeah. by a guy dressed up as a yeah. scarecrow. Huh. Yeah, interesting. Well, thank you yeah. again, all of you, for writing in. Yes. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Um, now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, The Prowler, starting with. Holly. Mm. What did you think of The Prowler? Yeah, no, I didn't like it. <laughs> uh, it's really boring. It's real boring. The kills were fan-fucking-tastic. And I would say if you can just watch those, mm-hmm. you should, because they're fan- they're wonderful. It's I mean, Tom Sweeney, he, he does it again. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. come on. So, yeah, I mean, maybe if you can watch, like, the 10-minute gore thing, like, from the special features, maybe that would be worth a watch. Um, or if you can find a highlight reel that are just the kills in this movie, that would be fantastic. You can. There you go. Yeah. I was gonna say, That's, it's got to be on, it's there. on yeah. YouTube. Uh, I would say just watch that, because the rest of the movie is monumentally boring. Um, yeah, I almost fell asleep a couple times. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, I woke up in time for Tom Savini to dazzle us again. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, this is boring as fuck. I think I had more fun filling in the blanks of what the story behind the scenes was. That's always um, fun. Yeah, we had a good time, but no, don't watch it. It's really boring. Just watch the kills. Sean, what do you think? <sighs> You're speaking truth, Holly. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, like you said, the kills. Great. Love them. Um, the, some of them will stay with me forever until I die. Uh, hopefully in, not in any way that happened in this movie. Um... But the, yeah, the the rest of the movie, we we there's a lot of just just investigating that doesn't it, like we said before, it repeats itself a few times. The editing, I don't think, is too good in this. Oh, there's some weird. Mo- I I mean, I, <laughs> close to recommending it just for the weird love falling in love scene near the end <laughs> of the movie, but <laughs> just because it's so <laughs> weird. Um, but amazing. Um, but yeah, the rest, I'm kind of. Yeah, I'm not not in on the rest of the movie, um, but I think it's I think it's the movie's fault. I don't think it makes things clear that should be. It doesn't give you the I, mean, I don't know. Maybe we're all dumb, but it doesn't give you the details you need for certain parts of the story to hit how they should hit, um, or hit in a way that you would understand because you were given all the information. Yeah, I don't think I can recommend the entire movie. Just parts of it, just the pieces. Um, so yeah, a no on the Prowler. I never thought I'd say that. Yeah, yeah. Man, I think it's a no on the Prowler. But go watch all the deaths. They're great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Highly recommend the deaths. Highly recommend the deaths. <laughs> <laughs> that's great movie. Eh. Could have been better. Um, it could have been better, and I think they could have easily made it better. But you know, there it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So no on the Prowler. Michaela, what do you think? Yeah, I I agree with a lot of what you're saying. It's just hard because I love slashers so much. And they're like catnip for me. Like I could watch movies like this every day for the rest of my life and be totally happy. You know, like, but this is not. She like, doesn't want to murder people. <laughs> this is not like the lower. This is like a lower tier version of what I want. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I do like the kills and there's stuff I like about it, but it is convoluted and edited poorly. Uh, the editing is just it. Oof, I can't even yeah. know if I can like blame the story because I feel like the editing. I feel like this movie was made in the editing room. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it the feels, end of it for sure. Yeah, yeah, it just how long? Mm, it's a heck job. It feels like I yeah. don't know. It's disappointing because there's a lot of good shit here, and mm-hmm. it should work, but it doesn't. You know, it's like just you know we were talking off mic about we we had all recently seen Thanksgiving. I'm not gonna spoil it, but like. We don't get slashers that are just like straightforward and not meta and jokey and humorous anymore. And mm-hmm. like, I, the formula is always the same, but I'm okay with it as long as it's executed well. And unfortunately, the formula isn't executed well yeah. here. So I think I'm going to have to pass on it, but it, yeah. it hurts me to do so. Yeah, you know? it, it kind of does hurt. After- I'm, I'm disappointed in this movie. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Yes. You yeah. know, same scenes. You could do better. I expected better from you, you know? Um, do better, child. So, um, <laughs> Colin, what'd you, uh, what'd you think? I'm just looking at this now. This was released, released not rated. I guess the MPA oh. did pass on it. So, yeah, I can't um, imagine anybody would let this pass under an R. Yeah, yeah. Uh. I mean, because, yeah, Maniac, I think, was also uh, unrated, right, when it first came out. Um, pros and cons, right? <laughs> um, yeah. The pros. Heavy in the pro column, and the reason that anyone would seek out this movie is the artistry of the grotesque artistry of Tom Savini. Mm -hmm. He has called this movie in an interview his favorite or his best movie. Now, obviously, he knows his best work, yes, maybe his best work or his favorite, you know. So, Obviously, uh, you know, coming up with the gags, and this is still like fairly early, right? And mm-hmm. he was an actor in in Martin, right? The uh, uh, George Romero movie. He was an actor in Night Riders. He's an actor in Dawn of the Dead. But then he's doing the makeup effects, and so this is like I think after Maniac, um, like his big showpiece. Well, he'd done Friday the Thirteenth uh, prior to this. Um, but yeah, somehow he thinks that he like, uh, you know, what the stuff that he came up with here, because I think in the burning, he also did like that kind of sawing at the, mm-hmm. yeah, there was you know, stuff in the burning. but to me, like Friday the 13th, the final chapter is like a bigger showcase for Savini's stuff. Mm. Um, creep show is like a showcase for a different kind of, you know, more fantasy effects work and stuff like that, which yep. he really didn't do a whole lot of. Uh, before or since he was mostly the gore guy the gore in this is fantastic shocking brutal uh 
you know, and and for Zito's um, direction, you know, it's like I think that's something that um, I have felt in his movie. Like when you get a Joe Zito movie, there's um, um, it, there's like a cruel streak, a mm. sadistic yes. streak, maniac to his. Has- well, I know it's not a Joe Zito, but it feels like yeah. that movie is but even mean is mean spirited. Even um, uh, Invasion USA kind of yes. has yeah. that, you know, like you know, it's like his Chuck Norris movie feels uh, a little bit sadistic. Was that the one with the mall? Where they do the, the yeah, mall? yeah, okay. yeah, 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 and the rocket launcher. Yeah, the rocket launcher. Yeah. 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 The one, but the one guy, his best movie. Yes. Yeah, remember the guy who Definitely. was like uh, snorting the cocaine? He put his head down on it. Richard Lynch is like the bad guy. Like. Psh. I think so. Because the cocaine strop is, um, what was the great line? Like, I'm going to hit you with so many rights, you know, you're going to, you're going to beg for a left or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Sidebar. Um, the photography, it actually looks like a professional movie. Um, it looks like it has enough of a budget, at least initially. It's like they spend all their money, like front loaded. And then it was like, well, then we got this house and we're going to shoot that. Um, and it also, it kind of, if you've seen Friday the 13th, the final chapter, it has a similar look and quality and atmosphere to yeah. it. Um, on the con side, the um, the screenplay was written by a guy named Glenn Leopold and another guy named Neil Barbera, who was yeah. the son of, of Joseph Hanna Barbera, Barbera <laughs> of Hannah Barbera. Oh, wow. So there you go. <laughs> um, the final girl... Tired of these fucking cartoon. Um, Pam, <laughs> she, uh, Vicky Dawson is her name. Yeah, I feel like I've seen her before. Maybe she just. She's uh, been in a bunch of stuff and she still continues to work, but it's like she's not. Her character doesn't. It's like, I think the movie's trying to be like, look at her solving this mystery, but because of the screenplay and the editing, I don't know. Like, I mean, we did a lot of work here, yeah. I think, in order to figure this shit out because this Agreed. is not necessarily readily available in the movie that you watch the movie that you watch is exceptionally boring where they think uh it's one of those movies where um they think they're creating suspense yes um Mm -hmm. but it's not it's just watching someone walking around in a house and then eventually a hand falls on their shoulder there's a bunch of misdirection even in the direction of the photography there's a scene where mark is in the graveyard and we see point of view camera Walking up behind yeah, him to his that? neck, and then well, never awesome. pays off. There's mm-hmm. nobody there, and so that's kind of a cheat. It's cheap. It's like misguided. Um, so I'm going to say the directions and maybe not all that great in, yeah. in in the way that this is done. And granted, it was early in his career. And, um, so overall, the biggest strength of the movie is it's Tom Savini effects. Yep. Uh, that's why you're going to see it. That's why that, uh, you know, anybody remembers the Prowler. I don't think it's enough to recommend it, unfortunately. Um, I'm really on the fence because it's yeah, like, it's that is one. why you go to the movie. Right. But the the problem is, right, it front loads two of them 20 minutes in. There's like these two awesome, hideous gore effects. Yes. And then... We wait. Right. Mm-hmm. And you wait. You got to suffer through a long slog of confusing nothingness mm-hmm. until you get another one. Relationship drama. Yeah, yes. which is the pool. That's shocking. Mm-hmm. The one after that, the uh, neck gouging isn't that like, you know, and then you got to wait to the end for the head blowing up. Yep. And so it feels like there's a pace or a rhythm that isn't there. Mm-hmm. So he's created these great effects that are kind of abandoned in the middle of this kind of slow moving um, slasher movie. So mm. I don't think it's one of the genre's uh, finest moments. I don't think so either. Yeah. So it's I guess just, it's wow. uh, I never thought we would sit here with the proud just because it's been built up in my head. Maybe nobody yeah, else. Same. Maybe it's just me. No, it has. But I feel like it's been built up for like years. Mm-hmm. I've never seen this until tonight that sitting right here, uh, all four of us going like, nah, yeah, mm-hmm. right. and Tom like, Savini's oh. the man. I mean, yeah. the thing that doing this show and watching some of the movies that we've watched um, has given me like a greater appreciation of Mark Showstrom mm-hmm. and his effects work uh, as like maybe second somewhere in there. I mean, they're obviously K and B, but sure. oh, you yeah. know, Mark Showstrom just as like a you know he did some great 
uh, gore effects and some of the slashers and stuff that he worked on. So it's like, you know, if his name is on it, you're probably going to get some good uh, kills too. But um, yeah, so unless you're a Tom Savini completionist, you can probably, I guess that means you're not contractually obligated yeah. just, to watch the pro- the Prowler. Just mm-hmm. watch the highlight reel. Yeah. yeah, which is readily available on YouTube, and they are disgusting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well, there it is. Okay, so yeah. next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Sean, what are we watching next week? I think next week we'll be watching Wes Craven's Deadly Friend. Oh, boy, the basketball. Yep, the basketball. I've this never is seen a this weird I've... fucking movie. Oh, good. I have never you. seen this movie. I've never seen this. this, yeah. Christy Swanson and the Uh-oh. kid from Little House on the Prairie. And uh, what's her name? Annie. Uh, uh, oh, shit. Throw Mama mm. from the Train. Oh, the yeah. mom? And, Grum- uh, and uh, Goonies. Goonies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This, has, oh, been crap, a, this has been on my list for a while. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Well, it Deadly should be friend. interesting, if nothing else. <laughs> Next week, this is, this is the movie I think he did after A Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.